So it's not a secret that Desmos can be an amazing tool that can dramatically increase your SAT score, but only if you know how to use it and when to use it. Because at the end of the day, Desmos is a double-edged sword. If you use it when you're not supposed to, you're gonna end up wasting so much time. However, for a question like this, if you try to solve it with hands, it's literally gonna take you minutes. But with Desmos, you can literally get the answer in seconds. So sit back, relax, and let's get a higher score on your next SAT. So if it's your first time here, my name is John. I've been specializing on SAT math and SAT math only for the past 11 years. And my specialty is taking a student who's currently in four, five, 600 range to 700 plus by their next SAT. And there are so many Desmo skills you need to equip yourself with, and this is just one of them. So make sure you like and subscribe to stay up to date with the latest information on the digital SAT. And by the way, guys, everything we talk about in this video and more is going to be nicely organized into this one page summary sheet, which I'm going to link it in the description box down below. I highly recommend you guys to print it out, take some notes and try with me because that's the best way and the fastest way to get better on the SAT. So when are we supposed to use Desmos? Well, you can use Desmos to solve a complicated equation. And what I mean by that is whenever you're solving for a single variable in a single equation, then you can quickly solve for it by plugging it into Desmos because when the equation is graphed, the x-intercept will represent the solution or the value you are looking for. So in other words, when you're working with a single equation and single variable and the equation looks very complicated and time consuming, then simply plug it into Desmos and go straight to the x-intercept because that's gonna be the solution or the answer you are looking for. So here is a quick example. So the question is asking, what is a solution to the given equation, right? So by definition, solution is referring to the value of x that makes our equation true. And in our case, we're looking for the value of x that makes our y value equal to zero. And for a parabola, what do we call values of x that makes our y's equal to zero? We call them the x-intercepts. So in other words, what's the solution to the equation? It's asking what are the x-intercepts to the equation? And we can try to expand this out and factor it out and do a whole bunch of math, but we can simply just graph it out on Desmos and go to the x-intercepts. So let's pull up Desmos and graph it out. We're going to get three parentheses, 2x plus 4. And we see that our x-intercepts are located at minus 2.5 and 0 0.33, which means either of them can be the answer. So we can put either negative 2.5 or 0 0.333. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You get five spots on the digital SAT. So does that make sense? Whenever you're working with a single equation and single unknown variable and it looks very complicated, then simply pop it into Desmos and go to the x-intercept. Make sense? Let's go to a little bit more complicated version. The question says a right circular cylinder has a height that is four inches less than its radius. If the cylinder's surface area is this much, what is its radius in inches? So this is a volume question and you might not think of Desmos at first, but soon it's gonna become obvious that Desmos is the way to go. Here's why. So the question tells us that the height is four inches less than the radius. So our height is going to be four inches less than our radius. And it tells us the surface area is this much. And the surface area formula for a cylinder is going to be two pi r h plus two pi r squared. And that's gonna to equal to 896 pi. So in our equation, we currently have two unknown variables, which means if we isolate for r, we're gonna have like an H at the end because that H is not going anywhere. And if we look at the answer choices, our radius does not have an H, which means that H has got to go. And how can we get rid of it? Well, the question tells us that H is actually equal to R minus four. So we can put it in and switch H with an R. So our equation would look something like two pi R parentheses R minus four plus two pi R squared is equal to 896. And now R is the only unknown variable, which means we can solve for R. But the only problem is this looks like a lot of work. Like we have to move this to the other side. We have to expand this out, combine it with this, factor it out, and then find the value of R. And that's gonna take a minute. But the good news is that what are we working with? We're working with just one equation with one unknown variable, which means we can pop this into decimals and go to the X intercept. So let's do that. So the equation is two pi R parentheses R minus four, and look, there is nothing on the graph. There's literally no x-intercept anywhere. And that's because Desmos can only graph it if you have an x or a y in the equation. 
if you have any other variables like r, it's going to ask you to plug in a value for r. And we're trying to find out what r is, not try to play around with it. And that's not really giving us anything. So because we need either x or a y in the equation, I'm going to change all the r's with an x and go to the x intercept. If you swap it out with y, go to the y intercept. So if we swap it out, we are going to get this beautiful graph right here. And we see our x intercepts are minus 14 and 16, which means our r can be minus 14 or 16. But because radius cannot be negative, our answer will be 16. Our answer is choice C. So does that make sense? So for some questions, it's going to be very obvious that you have to use decimals. But for others, you're going to have to do some work until you hit a question pattern like this, where you see one equation with one unknown variable. And the moment you recognize it, pop it into Desmos, go to x-intercepts, and you're going to be good to go. Make sense? Let's try another question. So the question says, what is the product of the solution for the equation shown above? So for this one, if you move the right side to the other side by subtracting it, you're going to end up with this minus this is equal to zero. And now what do we have? We have one equation with one unknown variable. And we're looking for solutions to this equation. And as we talked about in number one, solution is referring to the value of x that makes our equation true. In this case, we're looking for value of x that makes our y value equal to zero. And the value of x that makes the y equal to zero are known as the x-intercepts. So we're looking for the product of the solutions or the product of the x-intercepts. And to find them, we can either expand all this out, combine it, and try to factor it. Or because we have one equation and one unknown variable, we can simply pop it into Desmos, graph it out, and go to the x-intercepts directly. So let's graph this out on Desmos. And if I plug it in, I'm going to get 2x over 3, parentheses, x minus 3. And I'm going to see that my x-intercepts are going to be located at minus 27 and 0. So what are my solutions? It's going to be minus 27 and 0. And what is the product? Let's multiply it. It's going to be 0. So my final answer is going to be 0. So does that make sense? So anytime you have one equation, one unknown variable, then pop into Desmos and go to the x-intercepts. And some of you guys might be wondering, John, when you graphed it, why did you do a plus 3 here? Because on the original equation, when you're subtracting the whole thing, this minus distributes to this and also to the minus 3, which becomes a positive 3 when you move it to the other side. So it's going to be 2x over 3. So does that make sense? If you got this one, let's move on to the last one. It's going to be a little wonky. So the question says, if C is a constant and 1 over 128 is a solution to the given equation, what is the value of C, right? So for this question, instead of having to find the solution, it already gives us what the solution is. And instead, it's asking us to find the value of C. So let's look at this equation right here. We have one equation and two unknown variables, C and X. And to find out what C is equal to, we have to get rid of all the X's in the equation. Otherwise, our final answer is going to have an X in it. And for a free response, we cannot put a variable in there. So how are we going to get rid of all the X's? Well, the question tells us that this is a solution to the equation, right? And solution is what? Solution is the value of X that makes our equation true, which means when X is equal to this in this equation right here, that means the equation is going to be true which means we can plug in 1 over 128 as the value of x. Why? Because it is a solution. It will make the equation true. Because that will make the equation true, it gives us the permission to plug in that value for x. So if we put it in, we're going to get c over 1 over 128 is equal to 1 over 128 plus 3 divided by 5 parentheses 1 over 128 to the second power. And by now, you're probably sick of hearing it, but say it with me. What do we see here? We see one equation with one unknown variable, and it looks very, very, very complicated. Just the thought of having to do this by hand or calculator just makes me want to drop out. So for the sake of your future and not getting disowned by your family, let's pop this into Desmos and find out what our C is. So if we pop it in, we're going to get C over 1 over 128. And what do we see? We see nothing. And why is that? And that's because Desmos only understands X or Y and no other letters. So let's change it to X. And what do we see? We see nothing. But if you zoom out, we see that, oh, our X needs to be what? Our X needs to be 77. So what's the value of C? Our C is going to be 77. That's going to be our final answer. Does that make sense? 
So the main takeaway from this video is for some questions, it's going to be very obvious. For other questions, it might not be. But what you need to remember is anytime you see a single equation and a single variable and it looks complicated, then you can simply pop it into Desmos and go to the x-intercept and quickly get the answer. Give the thumbs up if you have found this video helpful. And if you have any questions or comments or future requests, leave in the comment section down below. And I'll see you guys on the next video.